Good afternoon, everyone, and I want to welcome you to the Machine Vision for Factory Automation webinar. I'm Maureen Clancy, the Marketing Project Manager for Teledyne Dalsa Industrial Products. And uh, today's presenter is Dave Richardson. He's a vision solutions provider from Teledyne Dalsa Industrial Products. And Dave has over 10 years of experience in the machine vision industry. So I'm now going to hand, hand everything over to Dave. OK, thanks, Maureen. Uh, the intent of today's discussion is to provide an overview of the various areas that we need to consider when applying machine vision. Okay, so these benefits include uh, benefits of machine vision to the automation of today's manufacturing processes. Um, what need to be, what things need to be de identified when defining these requirements. We'll discuss the importance of determining the implementation costs and how to understand and communicate the task of the vision system. From there, we'll address the components typically required in the building of an inspection system. And depending on the application, runtime requirements may vary from design requirements. So we'll discuss those differences. Um, and we'll also discuss the various options of integrating these systems with the factory, as well as options for uh, future expansion. Most machine vision systems are used to improve quality control of the manufacturing process. By identifying manufacturing problems online and in real time, these systems can eliminate costly errors. Fewer errors mean higher production yields and lower costs. The higher quality product will improve the company's reputation in the marketplace. In some cases, it's technically impossible to inspect products. Small parts, high-speed applications, uh, dangerous environments are all possible reasons for applying machine vision in the place of uh, limited human inspection. Okay, so now we've convinced ourselves the benefits of machine vision. Let's move on to defining the requirements of such a system. What feature or features need to be inspected? Are we looking for correct part assemblies, that is, are components present and installed properly in the assembly? Uh, are we inspecting labels on a product? Is the label position correct? Is it the right label? Is it in the right place? Is it damaged? Uh, these are all quality inspection issues surrounding labels. Uh, maybe we're machining a, a part and we need to uh, check the part for dimensional uh, correctness. Or perhaps color. We're printing labels or different products that have colors, they need to be the proper color. Um, again, all these things are features that the machine vision system will handle. Uh, in our requirements definition, we need to consider the size of the smallest defect versus the size of the inspection area. Also, how is the part going to be presented to the inspection system? Is it coming down a conveyor, moving? Is it stationary? Um, and if it's moving, at what speed? Another consideration is the environment of uh, the application. Dirt, heat, humidity, vibration, these are all factors that need to be considered when uh, deploying uh, machine vision. Also, is there physically uh, room for the vision system? We've got to mount the camera, mount lights. Um, sometimes these machines are, are compact and dense and uh, we need to consider what, what room we need to uh, have to present the uh, part and inspect it. Another consideration is do the parts change? Do uh, we run different products down the same line? Um, how is this accomplished? Is it manual switchover? Can different parts come down in the same line? All these things need to be uh, accounted for when uh, defining the requirements. Also, who's going to maintain the program system? Are we going to sometimes uh, one guy will program it and then hand it off to uh, plant engineers to maintain it, uh, and then how easy is that to accomplish. Also, um, will the machine vision system need to interface to other plant equipment? Does it have to talk to PLCs, robots, um, enterprise systems? Again, all these things need to be uh, upfront on the requirements design. And what are the requirements for the operator? Could just be a simple red light, green light, pass, fail, uh, up through a cu custom PC interface. 
One of the key factors uh, in the decision process for a machine business system is the return on investment. In this calculation, the total cost of implementation needs to be addressed. This can vary greatly from supplier to supplier. Beyond the initial equipment purchase, we need to consider the deployment cost. Is the system easy to set up and operate? What skills or training is required? Can plant personnel maintain or modify as future requirements change? Does the supplier require a support contract? What are the costs for software upgrades? These all contribute to total costs of the machine vision system and are key considerations when um, determining return on your investment. While every application is unique, they all share some common concepts. The inspected part needs to be presented consistently to the camera. The camera takes a picture of the part, sends that picture to an imaging processing software. The software analyzes the image and performs some action based on the analysis. Um, this action or results are then communicated. Typically, these systems run 24-7. All right, so let's review some of those concepts in a little more detail. We talked about um, considering how the parts are going to be presented to the camera. Are they going to come down a conveyor? Are they palletized? Uh, maybe it's a manual station where uh, an operator places the part in, into an inspection uh, um, fixture. Uh, or it could be positioned by a robot. Sometimes the parts are positioned in front of the camera for the robot, or occasionally the camera will be mounted on an end effector and um, positioned to inspect different parts uh, of an assembly. How's the, when the part is in place, how's the camera going to be triggered? We're going to have a photo eye triggering parts as they come down a conveyor. Uh, could be a signal from a PLC or communications. Uh, once it's triggered, of course, then we have to process the image. And then it is, uh, Internal software, of course, processes it based on how it's configured, and then a decision is made based on those parameters. This decision could result in the part being ejected uh, or the data simply transmitted to a PLC for disposition. And in some cases, we log both the image and the data on a storage device for quality traceability. These are all factors that are uh, possible in a machine vision application. So machine vision can be applied to a wide range of applications. Positioning of components can be verified or even reported back to robots for automated pick and place. Products can be identified by reading 1D, 2D codes, either printed or on uh, direct park marking. Characters may be read using OCR, which stands for Optical Character Recognition, to validate uh, date and lot codes and so forth. Key features can be measured and compared against allowed manufacturing tolerances. Machine vision systems can verify that assemblies are complete and correct. They can verify that packages contain the correct products and quantity. Flaw detection is another competent application for machine vision. Flash and short shots in plastic injection molding facilities are a prime example. Missing color on printed labels is another example. We have a couple of uh, real applications we thought we'd share just to give you some idea how machine vision can be applied uh, in actual applications. Uh, in this slide, we see, of all things, we're inspecting bread dough. So on the left, we see that there's a, uh, since it's a food uh, facility, we have to mount the camera inside an FDA qualified enclosure. And then uh, in this application, we are determining that the right quantity of uh, dough is present in the pans before this bed is braked. This is a, a, a bread application. So sometimes they can have missing loaves or, more importantly, if they have more than one, uh, trouble happens in the manufacturing process. And in this case, manufacturing is baking. <laughs> so you don't want too much dough in your, in your bread pan. Uh, another application example is a sprinkler head assembly inspection. This company manufactures a variety of different sprinkler heads, um, and you can see them on the left. On the right is an actual picture of the application where we're using machine vision tools to 
verify that the um, diverter assembly is correctly positioned uh, rotationally. It's important for the, uh, the way the water comes out of these sprinklers. We mentioned earlier plastic injection molded parts. Uh, this is a typical example. Um, the actual part is on the left and on the right shows uh, some machine vision tools used to detect both uh, flashing and short shots on those parts. Another example of a product where measurements were, were uh, the key here on this application. On the left we see the actual installation with a camera, the part in position, and in this case we're using a backlight. Uh, on the right is the actual camera image, and in this case we're using some software caliper tools to measure the uh, dimensional of the uh, dimensions of the flared assembly. Also mentioned 2D uh, data matrix code uh, reading. If you look closely, on the right you'll see that that is actually a medical stint, and on the very tip of that is a laser etched 2D matrix, and they wanted to read that. Uh, so again, something a human really can't do, uh, and many dedicated code readers might have a difficult time reading that, but uh, machine vision camera-based code readers uh, would have no problem. We also mentioned using color. Folks will recognize an uh, automotive fuse box here. Uh, the different amperage of fuses are different colors, and of course it's critical that these uh, are installed in the proper place. They're all present, and they haven't mixed yellow ones with green ones and so forth. So Again, these are typical examples of um, actual applications of machine vision systems uh, used to improve uh, product quality. So in every machine vision application, image quality is key. The more work you put in up front to provide the best image possible, the better your resar results will be and the happier you will be. Um, so what's involved with obtain obtaining this quality image? You need a quality camera, which might involve higher resolution imager. Uh, just depends on, again, what we described earlier with the smallest defect size and the field of view that we're looking for. Um, you also need good optics. Um, there's different quality of lenses, but also the optics uh, involve um, focus, working distance, uh, compensating for uh, part position variances, so optics are key as well. Lighting. Lighting needs to be consistent. Factory doors, opening windows, lights from other devices, all must be minimized. Uh, often the inspection area is shielded from the rest of the factory floor, uh, just to prevent these outside interferences. The goal of the specific lighting used uh, is to amplify or accentuate the features that we want to inspect while attenuating or minimizing the background items. Here's a good example of uh, different lighting, machine vision lighting, used on a single part. So all five of these images are the exact same part. Um, the part is a silicone rubber part with um, various features that could be of interest uh, to the manufacturer. On the upper left, we see example of this part uh, image with a camera using a backlight. This might be good to determine are all the holes present? Is this part correctly formed? Um, are any of the holes occluded, maybe partially blocked, which again would be a, a quality defect. In the middle picture is uh, taken with a ring light. And while the ring light is common on a lot of uh, earlier applications of machine vision. This is an example of where it probably isn't the right light for the product. Uh, you can see that it's giving us some uneven lighting. Um, the holes on the right are a little bit more clear than uh, the ones on the left are a little washed out. So again, it might be alright depending what you're after, but we can see that there is some unevenness in this lighting. A striking example is the one on the upper right. Uh, this is taken using a dark field light. And dark field is a low angle light that's used to uh, highlight uh, surface variations. So in the first two, we had no idea that this part actually has uh, an embossed uh, part number on. So if that was important for us to uh, 
inspect for or determine to make sure this part was indeed marked correctly. Um, dark field light is probably the only choice in that case. It also would be useful if you were wanting to measure the um, diameter of the uh, larger uh, holes on this part. You can see that there are some through holes or then, then there's some um, indented holes, so the major diameter ones on these. And the lower right was taken with a dome. It sort of has the opposite effect of the dark field. In other words, it's eliminating any um, surface an anomalies and completely um, making a uniform uh, lit surface of the part such that we can now measure uh, the whole diameters if we want to in this, in this uh, example without being um, confused or having the, the optical noise of the uh, part numbers that we saw in the upper picture. And finally on the lower left is a diffuse on axis that's also called a DOAL. D -O -A -L. Uh, that is popular. It could be all right in, in, in many applications. It's often times the same effect as a dome. Um, but in this case, probably not the best image that we'd want to in this part. Since we're talking about that part, here's an image or a picture of the actual application. If you look uh, closely, you can see that there is a, uh, these silicon rubber seals are being fed out of a vibratory bowl. It's in the lower left of that uh, picture. They get fed out onto a conveyor, down the conveyor, and then at the end, you can see that they go over a backlight, which again gives us the image from the camera that you see on the lower left. And you can also see that if you look really closely, there's some, uh, a photo sensor that triggers a camera. The camera's out of the picture, but it's up above, taking that camera image. And then the little metal chute on the far right will um, cause parts to uh, blow off that are good parts. Bad parts continue off into the conveyor and into that box on the very end. So this is a, an actual application. This part, uh, these guys make you know, millions of these parts every year, so they, they, can't, they can't have humans inspect these things as they go down in that, at that rate. All righty, so um, another consideration that we discussed earlier, we mentioned we'd cover are the um, uh, design time versus runtime considerations. Uh, these are important, and the design time uh, considerations include ease of programming. What level of expertise is required? Uh, do you need to be an engineer? Can a maintenance guy do this? Uh, just depends on on what level you need to, to uh, consider when in employing these things. Application flexibility. Can the system be adapted to many applications? Are you, this somewhat relates to performance of the tools. I mean, are there a number of tools that can be used to handle uh, complex applications um, or just a handful? Emulation capabilities. Can you run the application offline? Sometimes it's uh, convenient to be able to test the software on images uh, off production. So an engineer can do that at his desk, emulate the um, inspection system, make adjustments, and then redeploy it to the actual production environment. Can the system be interfaced to other components such as a PLC, Visual Basic program, a PC, robots? Uh, what capabilities exist there? And again, in design time, what documentation and supports available? Is there online help within the software while you're software while you're designing this? Uh, factory support, training, these are all considerations. Runtime needs would include operator interface. We've got to consider what's what's needed there. Um, is it an HMI panel that we can uh, display data and images on? Or what about a local display as a, uh, a computer monitor with images and uh, history of, of the inspection that's available? Some requirements need user administration. Can we set the system up for various levels of access um, and, and then control the amount of uh, access that these folks have, whether it's changing the actual application, changing what product is going to be inspected. Those are all things that need to be considered. Um, solution changing. Can, how many products can be configured? Can you configure a vision system to 
automatically detect uh, a different product and then switch its inspection parameters to correctly uh, inspect that product. Portability. When products change, is the system easily redeployed? Sometimes these things, you know, product lines change, products get slightly changed. We need to quickly uh, be able to readapt this uh, system to uh, new manufacturing requirements. Runtime model editing. Can we modify the inspection parameters online? Uh, sometimes we need to adjust slight tolerances um, as the products are being inspected. And what kind of support is available during runtime? This would be local support, factory support, worldwide support. These are all considerations for when evaluating a machine vision supplier. A flexible vision system will offer various communication options for interfacing with other equipment. Digital I.O. for hardwiring photo sensors, status lights, PLCs, uh, solenoid kickers, all these kind of control devices are a good consideration. Uh, serial ports for interfacing with PLCs, motion controllers for robots, touch screen displays, you know, does your system have that? Ethernet port, which is one of the more important ones these days, is uh, commonly used to interface with PLCs, other third-party equipment, uh, and factory enterprise systems. Communication protocols such as Modbus, Profinet, Ethernet IP, these all provide standard uh, languages, communication languages, for uh, interfacing with complementary factory devices. Uh, operator access is another important consideration in some fa factories. Uh, as mentioned earlier, a machine vision system should provide capability to restrict or lock out unauthorized user access. Uh, for highly controlled manufacturing envi environments, such as pharmaceuticals, uh, is also required to log this access and log any changes made to the system. The vision system in this case and this information to the results from each inspections are logged for quality traceability. Um, vision systems can typically output results on either serial or Ethernet links uh, or log the inspection data to a common data file. And this shows an example of data being logged uh, to a local file in a CSV format. Machine vision system um, should be expandable as well. Um, it needs to be a critical component of your manufacturing process. For selecting a vision supplier or solution, make sure it's, it's expandable to, to meet your needs. For example, is software capable? Um, are software updates free? How flexible is the hardware? Can you add cameras to the system? Can you add different camera resolutions of the systems. And also, is it possible to, uh, to upgrade the software? How easy is that to do? These are all things that are important um, since a machine vision system is a, can become a very critical process uh, component in your manufacturing process. So in summary, machine vision is a key technology for improving production quality and productivity. Uh, for successful implementation, you need to go through the, uh, the steps that we've outlined uh, earlier here. So define the task you want it to perform. Decide how it's going to integrate into your factory. You have PLCs involved. You have operators involved. How's that going to happen? Um, and then understand the performance criteria and the limits of the technology you choose. So depending on what supplier you choose, um, everybody's got their limits, and you need to make sure that you are aware of those uh, and make sure they match uh, the performance you're, you're requiring out of your machine vision system. And lastly, pick a solution that uh, will not only satisfy your current needs, but also your future needs. Uh, these projects typically grow once folks implement machine vision as a quality uh, control system. Uh, they find more and more places to use this, and you'd like to have a system that can grow with your uh, with your needs. 
So with that, I hope uh, you've enjoyed the discussion, and I'm going to turn it back over to Maureen. Well, thanks so much, Dave. And uh, that concludes today's webinar, and I want to thank everybody for joining us. And uh, just a reminder that um, our email will be sent to all registrants with a link uh, to download this webcast. And it will also be accessible on our website at www.teledyndalsa.com/ipd. Thanks, everyone, and have a great afternoon.